Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. Today we are going to talk about a very upcoming field that is genomics. Today we are going to see the career, careers and future scope of genomics. I'm Dr. Vaishali, academic specialist at Biotechnica. Biotechnica is a space where we guide you on anything and everything regarding your bioscience career. Come, let's start the topic. This video is sponsored by Biotechnica. Biotechnica is the world's largest platform of bioscientists. www.biotechnica.org is the website link where you can go and see what do we offer and what is out there for you. There are a lot of uh, workshops that's coming up uh, on Saturdays, so you can just go to this particular uh, link and then see what are the workshops that's coming up and what is good for you and what you can take up and learn from these workshops. We also have a very special internship that is all-in-one R&D internship that starts from the 27th of December. So this particular, uh, particular uh, Internship is yet to be announced, so stay tuned onto our channel. You can also call on to this number. You can also call on to this particular number or even you can drop an email to info at biotechnica.org for knowing more about this internship. There's also Drona Batch for uh, all those CSIR net aspirants out there, you can pay as low as just rupees 4,000 and you can get a one year subscription. Along with this subscription, you also get to attend all the workshops as well as one internship for free at Biotechnica. You can call to this particular number that is 18001200 or you can drop an email at info at biotechnica.org to know more about this Drona batch for CSIR net preparation. Let's start our topic. So we are today talking about genomics, the careers and future scope of genomics. First going on to introduction, right? So what is genomics, right? What is genetics? What is the difference between genetics and genomics, right? Isn't that Interesting, well, yes, genetics is nothing but the study of one particular gene from our body. So gene is nothing but a, a, a information, it's, it's a, a DNA or an RNA that codes, that has the information regarding our uh, body, right? So that is what a gene is and genetic is nothing but study of one particular gene. But genomics on the other hand, Genomics, on the other hand, is nothing but the study of the whole genome. That is, study of all the genes of an organism, say for human, uh, for example, it could be healthy or even altered or diseased genes as well. But it is the study of all the genes in the organism and that is what is genomics. Genomics particularly relies on the next gen sequencing or the NGS that we call. So this technology is particularly useful when you have to sequence a large amount of data within a very short period of time. So this is the NGS sequencing that happens and it's very much useful for genomics and only after the sequencing uh, was done did genomics come into picture itself. Now what are the application of genomics, right? So first is we're going to talk about microbial genetics. So microbial genetics or microbial genomics is nothing but a study of uh, the genome or the genes of microorganisms. So you have human microbiome for animal microbiome as well as soil microbiome, right? So soil microbiome as we know is for agriculture that is to improve the qualities of the soil or to uh, you know, reduce the uh, ill effects of soil. So all of those is done by studying the microbial constituent and the genomic constituent of the microbes in the soil. The second is of course the animal microbiome where we can help in the uh, veterinary science uh, side of uh, biology and you can study the uh, the genomic of the microbiomes over there. The next is the human microbiome. So that is nothing but how uh, the interaction between microorganisms and humans say it it could be disease causing microorganisms or it could even be uh, you know useful microorganisms to study that particular relationship we also need 
to know the sequence of the microorganism that's involved in the interaction with the human. So that is the reason we have microbial genomics in picture. Second is of course the different diseases. So the major diseases that uh, has been studied or that has been uh, researched upon very heavily using genomics is cancer, sickle cell anemia, anemia, thalassemia, or even the SARS-CoV-2, so especially in getting the vaccines for the COVID. Uh, so genomics was very heavily used upon. The next is about identification of variants. So uh, for uh, you know, the development of the disease, right, the genes in the uh, human or even in animals would have been varied. There could have been mutations or variations in these uh, specific important genes because of which uh, it causes diseases. So identification of such genes and curing the particular disease is one of the major application of genomic. The next is of course the precision medicine or what we call as pharmacogenomics. So in pharmacogenomics, so what this uh, pharmacogenomics or precision medicine majorly means is that you design the drug according to the genetic makeup of the human. So according to the uh, uh, the you know genetic makeup of a person, you design the drug and you customize the drug so that it will help in curing the disease of that particular person alone. So this is more of customizing and designing of the drugs or the medicine. Now, what are the different career opportunities? We saw what genomics is, where all it is applicable, but what are the different career opportunities if I'm going to be a genomic expert, right? So first is the clinical genomics. So of course, this um, in this particular clinical genomics, you would be associated with the healthcare industry, in hospitals or clinics or uh, even in researchers that is done in uh, association with the hospital. So this is what a clinical genomics would do. Second is cancer genomics. As the name itself suggests, it's about, uh, you know, the, the genes that's involved for uh, cancer for uh, cancer as well as what cure can be possible for these genes, these altered genes. That is what the study of cancer genomics would involve. The next is genomics of rare diseases. So especially in India, we have a lot of rare diseases like for example, sickle cell anemia, anemia and thalassemia. So for all of these diseases also we, uh, you know, we employ genomics to cure these diseases. So yes, the genomics of rare diseases is one such career opportunity. The next is genomics and wellness. So like how we saw that uh, few genes are involved, uh, you know, for uh, if the few genes are altered, it leads to diseases and a few microbes are also involved in interaction with the human and they cause diseases. But there are also few useful uh, microorganisms in our body. So yes, that is where your genomics and wellness comes into picture, right? The next is the microbiome based therapeutics. So how uh, a mi microorganism is used for therapeutic purpose. So that is what is a microbiome based therapeutics. Next is sequencing engineer. So we already saw how the next gen sequencing is involved for the development of genomics as a researcher, as a subject itself. So yes, it in involves a lot of sequencing and also it involves development of sequencing methods or uh, even applicability of this these sequencing that has been done. So that is where a sequencing engineer would come into role. The next is bioinformatics and computational biology. So sequencing uh, the DNA involves a lot of data to be stored, right? So it involves a lot of data that comes out because of sequencing and also uh, studying the interrelationship between these sequences. So that is another set of data itself that, uh, you know, is generated because of genomics. And all of these, storing them and analyzing them involves a lot of bioinformatics and computational biology in genomics. So these are the various career opportunities that one can have if you have a background in genomics. 
Now, what is the future scope of genomics, right? What is what is it that is that is booming right now in India and global? That's what we are going to see. First is, of course, like we talked about the cancer genomics because cancer is increasing every day. There's, there's no doubt about it. Anybody would say that. But so yes, the involvement of cancer, involvement of genomics in curing uh, or and diagnosing cancer is something that's picking up. So you could you can be a scientist who would be working in cancer genomics where you'll be studying about the genome instability genome instability or mutation so how a particular mutation in a gene causes cancer so that is what would be your a particular field of study in a nutshell if you are a cancer genomic scientist. The next is of course about diagnosis and prognosis that is diagnosing cancer so uh, if the genes are involved in cancer, then apart from treatment, we also need to first diagnose that this particular, uh, you know, gene has been altered. So, which is important for cancer treatment because diagnosis in the initial stage is important for, you know, proper uh, treatment of cancer. So, yes, diagnosis is very important. The next is prognosis, that is prevention of cancer. So, that also involves the study of genomics that's, uh, you know, related to cancer. The next, uh, the second, uh, you know, future career opportunity would be rare diseases scientists. So, like we, how we had discussed about sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, and hemophilia. These are few of the diseases that are rare in nature, especially in India, but genomics is definitely necessary for curing these diseases. So if you, you can also be a rare disease scientist where you'll be studying about these particular diseases and you'll be coming up for treatment, diagnosis, as well as prognosis methods for these diseases. Next is being a bioinformatician or a computational biologist. So a bioinformatician is somebody who develop the tools and ways to store, segregate and analyze the data. What data? It's the DNA data or the genomic data that you've obtained. So if you are a bioinformatician, you would be developing all of these tools to store, segregate and analyze the DNA or the gene data. However, if you are a computational biologist, you would be using these tools to render meaningful biological information. So you'd be reading uh, about, so once you get those data using the tools, you would be reading about how to analyze them, what is the interrelationship between them, how do you predict something, how do you predict, uh, say, a disease or as simple as how do you predict the 3D structure of a protein. So such, uh, you know, uh, Meaningful biological information will be obtained using these tools by a computational biologist. So that's the difference between a bioinformatician and a computational biologist in the field of genomics. The fourth is being a product manager. So this sounds more like a management role. This is more of a management role, but here you need the technical data, especially if you're working in a next generation sequencing companies. So these companies have a lot of projects that will be lined up where, uh, you know, the person who would be heading that particular project would need to know the technical details about genomics and technical details about sequencing as well. Otherwise, the, the you know, the, the completion of the project and the reach to the end user would be hampered. So it's important uh, for the product manager to know the technical details. And that is when, if you have a background in genomics, then you are really, you know, good to go with a next generation sequencing company. The next is about the ethical, legal and social implications or what we call the LC research, right? So as we know, genomics is involved in clinical data or uh, it's more involved in the healthcare industry as well. So you're going to deal with a lot of patient care and research, right? Patient research. So it has to involve ethical, legal, social, as well as policy implications. There are a lot of these implications that is there when you're studying genomics or when you're applying genomics in your research. So 
if you want to enter into the non-core or the legal or the policy side of genomics then this is one uh, you know area where you can get into because uh, the people who have legal expertise may not have the required technical knowledge so if you go with the technical knowledge you can learn the legal side of it and then you can be uh, you can perform better in such uh, you know roles the next is about pharmacogenomics like how we saw earlier as well pharmacogenomics is nothing but it involves precision medicine where the the medicine or the drug is going to be customized for as per the patient's need or as per the patient's genetic makeup. The next is the agri-genomics where the study of the soil micro, uh, microbiome or even the plant microbiome, uh, sorry, the plant genomics is involved so that, you know, it, it leads to betterment of agricultural yield. Next is the human microbiome. So uh, all the involvement or the interaction between a microorganism and human. So that's what we'll be uh, you know, studying uh, if you are a human microbiome specialist. Next is a genetic counselor. So a counselor, a genetic counselor is somebody who would be counseling the, uh, you know, the family as to, so this is more of a hospital, you will be involved in the hospital or the clinic, right? So here uh, you would be involved in counseling the family as to what kind of uh, precautions or what kind of methods they have to follow, what treatment they have to take for any genetic disease that is there in their hereditary, right? So that is what a genetic counselor would be doing. So if you are from the genomics background, you can also become a genetic counselor. With this, I come to the end of this uh, discussion. I'm sure it was super helpful. Are there any more career opportunities or are there any other future scope for genomics? Please let us know in the comment section below. We'll be very happy to learn from you and have a discussion out there. Thank you so much and see you all until next video.